بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May Allah bestow his mercy and tawfiq and guidance upon all the brothers and sisters who are coming today to uh, listen to words of wisdoms, wisdom. And may Allah Jalla wa Ala grant all the brothers and sisters who are putting an effort to set up this short course. May Allah Jalla wa Ala grant them tawfiq and guidance and may Allah Jalla wa Ala uh, give them the reward that they were desiring and more than it. Okay, today, inshallah, we will speak about a very important topic. And I believe that we have covered part of that topic some time ago. Have we? Huh? Who were there? You, you, and Idris. Tayyip. Do you remember what did we do? Do you remember what did we do? No, not yesterday's topic. No, before we had. Last year. Yeah, last year. Yeah. Okay. One like this. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, the one like this. Yeah. But we were talking about a very important topic, which is how to understand Islam. And nowadays, you may know that many people have different understandings about Islam. Even some of the understandings are totally contradicting each other. Someone is telling you, for example, jihad is the way forward, and someone says, well, we have to live in peace and love and harmony, etc. Okay, something like this. Leave out this area, but even in terms of other areas. Now, some people are talking about hijab. The proper hijab of a Muslim sister should be uh, covering the whole body, should not be a loose kind of clothes, should not imitate the clothes of disbelievers, and so on and so forth. Some other people say, well, now, no. This is not right. We have to have any kind of modest clothes are considered to be proper hijab. Okay? You have this understanding now. And leave alone the issue of apostasy. Leave out the issue of freedom of speech. Leave out the issue of equality between genders. Leave out the issue of the governing body, leave out the issue of democracy, and so on and so forth. These are the, some of them are Western values, and some of them are Islamic values, and how to live within Western values, or Western values-based system, and how to accommodate some of these values, which is right, which is wrong, how can Islam fit into Western life, and whether Islam can fit into Western life, etc. You have all these types of understandings, even to the degree now that maybe you know you are aware of the debate that is going around music. Music is it allowed? Is not allowed? Is a message a message of peace and love? Uh, yes, traditionally it was not allowed, but now we are in a we are in need of this art to convey the Islamic message and so on. So what is our stance? How can we understand what is right and what is wrong? Does that make sense? Okay. I believe that this topic is very, very important and it is talking about the core of our aqidah. Many people tend to teach aqidah means the names and attributes of Allah Jalla wa Ala, or means talking about tawheed, not worshipping someone 
beside Allah Jalla wa ala, just in a very broad term, and they don't get into how to derive, how to understand Islam in the first place, how to understand Tawheed in the first place. And that's why maybe after some time, many of them become confused about well-established issues regarding Islam. Now maybe you have heard that there is a debate going on uh, or an ongoing debate about whether Christians are considered to be believers or disbelievers, Muslims or yani, Kafirs. And does the word Kafir comprises uh, Christians, Jews, etc. There is a debate about that. Maybe that, from an Islamic point of view, historical point of view, is a well-established principle. Yet, because of uh, the fact that people are not well-founded on how to understand Islam in the first place, they became confused about these issues. Okay? طيب. We should not say طيب or we should say طيب. لا بس to say طيب. Some, uh, I remember in a course I used to say طيب. One brother thought that طيب is the name of one of the brothers there. <laughs> okay. Okay is the British version of طيب. So because we are British, so we should use okay. So I'm okay with that, but we need to come to a conclusion about this door. <laughs> because you closed it and then I am okay with everything, don't I? Huh? But we don't want to yani, upset the sisters. I don't know, because they are the people who open it. Otherwise, they will accuse us of being anti-feminists. I don't want to be accused of being anti-feminist. Yani, let them yani, have the, the setup, let them decide. Equality, yani. we decided, let them decide, give them their role to decide. Okay, this topic. Uh, before going into much details of this topic, I want you, all of you, brothers and sisters, to list down what do they expect from this topic? What kind of information they will get? What kind of expectations do they have? What do you expect to study in this topic? Just quickly, in one minute. Huh? al <coughs> uh, No, just leave it for Yes, sisters, again, the same thing for sisters. Huh? What do you expect to study in this topic? Everyone should participate. And you should participate actively. Otherwise, it is my bad habit to embarrass people. Yeah, so... This is another hint to help you to discover what kind of material you will be studying, what kind of information, or what kind of questions will be answered in this topic. Mm -hmm. Ya yeah, brother Zafar, what are you doing? Allah Ahlik, making notes on the mobile. Huh? You, yeah, these days you can't do anything. Huh? Tayyip? Yes, brother, have a pen and paper, please. No pen and paper.
what is this, a pen? But make sure to return the pen to the brother. Don't just take it with you home. Okay, Sayyib? Mm -hmm. Ready, uh, brothers? No. You are not ready. Uh, ready, uh, brother? What did you wrote something? Okay. Everyone wrote something? No, some people didn't write or have not write, have not written anything. Did you write something? What? Okay, this is yes. That's why I want yani, people before listening to something to expect. Why are you coming? Huh? We don't want just because there is an Islamic talk, mashallah, good talk, maybe the speaker is a well-known speaker. Okay, but why are you going there? What are you expecting? Taib, quickly, our brothers and sisters, okay, maybe some sisters can send some yeah, any papers just to see what kind of expectations they have. Okay, let us start. Yes, yeah, brother. Uh huh. What do you expect? Shall I stand up or I will make life easy, like difficult for the camera? Huh? Okay. No, no problem. I like to yeah, any stand up because this makes me more fitting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> He's scared to go there, huh? I know. It's like, no problem. Yes, yeah, Akhi. Uh -huh. Tell us, what do you expect? How to deduce the rulings from the evidence? From evidence or evidences? Ruler can be evidences. That's good. Mm -hmm. Any other thing? More explanation on this? Yes. The. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Taib. There are main four main sources of Islamic knowledge, and then. How to derive the evidences from them? Uh huh. Okay. Okay, yeah, okay, good, uh huh. So is developing, yes, brother. Okay, okay, excellent, okay, yeah, see, it is developing now. When we think all of us together, this is Yadullahi Ma'al Jama'a, the hand of Allah is with Jama'a, so when it is Jama'a, things are improving are becoming better. So now we want to understand how the, the, the Salaf, okay, the rightly guided people, understood Islam. So we can follow their methodology and understand Islam. Okay, yeah, uh-huh, more, yes. Sorry? Uh-huh, two opposite opinions, yeah, what to do with them? What to do with them? How to approach them? How to reconcile between them? Okay, how to remove any contradiction between them? Uh-huh. Yes, something else? Usul uh, fiqh, etiquette of seeking knowledge, of differing, of giving information regarding the deen. Type. Uh, prioritizing knowledge, okay, method of acquiring knowledge, method of analysis of uh, debate, information sources of knowledge, yeah, maybe some of them, yes, uh-huh, what else more, yeah, okay, who has the authority to make these decisions? and then assess the situation to apply uh, the correct meaning. Yes, all of these. 
طيب as you can yes يا اخي how to take the right way and to avoid following the wrong way avoid following the wrong path all of these okay as you can see are very important for us to understand everyone is claiming that his own understanding is the correct understanding is that true or not but now we would like to evaluate which understanding is the best understanding and which understanding is a wrong understanding also or moreover we need to evaluate which understanding is totally offline and which understanding is sort of acceptable understanding we might not agree with it yet it is still acceptable or tolerable means we can tolerate such understanding and some understandings we cannot tolerate them whatsoever okay so this is the topic the real or the main topic of this uh, seminar or this short course importance of the method of understanding islam understanding islam method of understanding islam how to approach islam how to understand islam okay now Uh, okay, uh, before going into this, I will skip some uh, slides in order to be able to cover up the topic. Just as a general term, brothers and sisters, if we want to understand anything, whether it is related to our deen or whether it is related to any matter in our life for example huh? you know we were trying to set up this projector and we want to know how to set up this projector so it functions properly as we wish what do we need to do in order to do that to achieve that objective what is the objective? Check the money. Huh? Check the money. No, just before that. What is our objective here? Huh? Have the to have the, uh, the projector uh, properly functioning. Okay, this is our objective. How to do that? Uh huh. Yeah, what is the method to do that? What did you say? Uh -huh. to check the manual, to check the manual. Uh -huh. so we have the right components uh -huh. uh, testing testing we say testing it the Arab way just plug it if it is burned then it doesn't work <laughs> okay uh -huh. oh, okay okay or ask someone who has experience about it, who has previous knowledge about it. Okay, excellent. So, we all agree that the proper way of understanding or trying to achieve what we want to achieve is to get the manual, okay, or maybe ask someone who is knowledgeable about this. Agree or not? So, it means we need sources of information sources of guidance agree on this yeah brothers five and then once we have these sources of information of guidance what do we need to do what is the next step huh verify them what do you mean by verify them Okay, yeah, that might be. That's a good point. Someone, Idris, brought the manual. Is this the right manual? Huh? Maybe we say some people start jumping into the manual and they say, yeah, you press this and then that and then, then this button and then 
And then someone, all of a sudden, he said, well, you are looking at the wrong manual. This is not the right manual. You should pick the other manual. Okay, so verify them. Or we are asking someone who has previous knowledge. Then, obviously, I claim that I have previous knowledge. And then I started yani, giving fatwa from about how this works. Then yani, it was burnt. So then you discover that I do not have that proper knowledge. So you need to verify it. Okay. You verified the knowledge or the sources. Means you came to a conclusion that these sources are authentic sources of information. Uh-huh. Then, yes? Yes, brother? Make sure that the information are Relevant to what? Your objective. Uh, this is again verification because is this the right manual that tells us how to operate this? This is the same thing. Uh huh. No, just before that, before that. Uh-huh. Before that. Uh-huh. Follow, uh -huh. Follow the procedure. Or study the information. Yes. You need to make sure that you are what? Able to understand what is written. Is that true or not? In many cases, we bring a manual. But the manual is sort of sophisticated manual. Complicated manual. We read and we do not understand what we read. So we need to make sure that we understood the text. Sah? Agree or disagree? Yeah, we need to make sure that we understood the text. And then, uh huh, after that, yeah, you implement the text. Excellent. Excellent. What does implement the text mean? Uh -huh. Following the instructions. Ah, so you brought the text, you read it in order to understand the text, and then now you are implementing the text. Hmm? Put things and instructions into practice. Okay, step by step means make sure that you implement the text correctly, not to misimplement, misimplement or let us introduce a new word in English, no problem. Misimplement the text or what you understood from that text. Okay, if someone, let us imagine that someone had that and he followed these or sort of followed these procedures and then all of a sudden it didn't work or it burned, okay, blow up. So now we want to say, we want to pinpoint where he had a mistake, okay? So we will come to a conclusion that either he, what, uh-huh, what? Okay, in the first place, either he picked what? The wrong manual. Means he followed the wrong source. He followed the wrong text. Agree? No. He picked the right manual. He got the right source. Uh-huh. So where is the... Incorrect understanding. He understood it wrongly. Yes, that is the proper manual, but he understood it wrongly. No, he understood it correctly. Then what is the? Okay, excellent. Did he apply it correctly? It says you press this and wait for five seconds and then press the other button. So, yeah, yeah, clear. What did you do? Yeah, I press this, then I press that. But did you wait for five seconds? Oh, yeah, I missed that. So the text is correct, the understanding is correct, but 
what what is the source of the error this error is misplacing okay or he did not implement it as it should be implemented okay now take that to the issue of any islamic uh, matter any islamic matter and when we see people implementing some weird understandings some unacceptable islamic issues matters and for example let us take the issue of hijab we know yani we see some sisters uh, wearing like maybe head scarf but they are wearing tight clothes and they are considering this as hijab i'm not talking about sisters who started to practice islam maybe we tolerate that in the beginning no i'm talking about people considering this as what as islam okay so either they did not follow the textual evidences from quran and sunnah or what they understood it wrongly or ahsant they are not implementing what they understood from the right sources they just followed their desires agree for example take even with yani brothers many practices that they do take the issue of yani let us take an example that yani a bit different yani take we have so many uh, matrimonial problems and marriage problems and some of these the source of these problems is how the brother is dealing with his wife hmm? either he did not pay attention to the text means the instructions given in the quran and sunnah about how to treat the wife or he understood these instructions uh, he got these instructions from the quran and sunnah but he understood them wrongly or which is the norm now is that although these are there the understanding is there but because of his background his cultural background he are unable to overcome these cultural barriers and he is following something else he is not implementing what should be understood from those correct sources agree okay طبعاً, once we say this about brothers we say the same thing about sisters and so on so these are examples okay let me give you another practical example maybe i have given you this example before let us take about let us take an example or let us have a debate let us imagine a debate between a brother who believes that uh, going to mcdonald and having a burger uh, yani burger king sandwich okay enjoying it with his family is absolutely fine and another brother who is saying who passed by yani brother kifayatullah passed by uh, what's what, what's your name jamal. ah jamal. yes jamal sorry jamal jamal was sitting with his wife uh, he's a proper hijab she was wearing proper hijab no problem طيب and they are eating from yani big mac okay with some maybe uh, uh, diet pepsi in order to have yani healthy yani pepsi طيب <laughs> And then, <laughs> huh? no, no, he is sitting to, okay, but Kifayatullah, then he said, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. He said, I have to enjoy the good and forbid the evil. And then he came to you and he said to you, Jamal, fear Allah, you are eating dead meat. This, you don't know that it is dead meat, this uh, McDonald. He said, What? Dead meat? What are you talking about? He said, Yeah. This is Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the Quran, Hurrimat alaykum al Maita. Maita is made unlawful for you. Uh -huh. So now we initiated a debate. So, how the, a proper debate should go on? How a proper debate 
should take place. Invite him to another sandwich. <laughs> so he is producing the evidence. He's telling you in the Quran. Hurrimat alaykum al mayta. Mayta is made unlawful for you. This is the Quran. Is uh huh. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Did you follow that? Yeah. Okay, this is the point. This is the point. He's, Jamal is not arguing about the authenticity of the source. This is an ayah, a verse from the Quran. Sah? And Hurrimat alaykum al mayta the general understanding is mayta made unlawful for you. Agree? He's not arguing with that. Okay, what he is arguing about is what? Uh, what is it? <laughs> what is he arguing about? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. Is this ayah talking about this particular meat? Okay, fair enough. So now the debate is what? About what? Ah, okay. The meat, how it is been slaughtered. How the source and the understanding of the source being implemented. Okay? Is that clear? Now in this case, can Kifayatullah say to him, you are rejecting the Quran? Can he say, okay, you are rejecting the Quran, you are rejecting the haqq. This is a verse from the Quran, you are going against the verse from the Quran? No. Do you agree with me or not? Huh? No, he's not rejecting the Quran. He's saying, I agree with you on the ayah, on the verse of the Quranic verse. I agree with you on the meaning. But I disagree with you that this meat is mayta. Okay, I disagree with you. I believe that this meat was slaughtered properly, so it is not mayta, so it is lawful. So the scope of that implementation is not here, it's something, well, something else. Okay, I agree on this. Same thing for many other contemporary issues that we discuss. Maybe if you remember, I don't know whether it, in, in, in Manchester it was a big issue, the issue of voting. Huh? People start calling each other kafir because he supports voting and some other people calling the other people are mubtadi, etc., etc., because of this. We are not following the proper way of understanding and implementation of the deen. And that's why in many cases, what is happening between brothers who are yani, keen to implement the Quran and Sunnah, they start arguing and arguing and arguing without understanding what they are arguing for and what they are arguing about. Is that true or not? Huh? That is in many cases. And that's why we have someone says he is off the manhaj, he is on the manhaj, he is mubtadi, he is right or he is wrong, etc. And Moreover, actually, take for example how to pray. Huh? People believe that the people on Sunnah, they pray if they put their hands like this. Yani means on the chest. And people who are praying, putting their hands like this, they are off Sunnah. Okay? But is that right or wrong? Huh? Yeah, this is a, an example in Fassamim, you know. Fassamim means in the center of the debate. That's why people are reluctant to accept it, okay? Because they grown up and they were nourished that if you are following the Sunnah, it means you pray like this. Huh? If you are 
praying like this, you are off the sunnah, you are not yani, implementing the sunnah. Is that true or not? This is what people are thinking. Agree or not? Yeah. Okay, let us, ad let us admit that this is the situation. But who said so? Who said so? Your interpretation of sunnah is this, and my interpretation is this. We need to follow the right methodology in order to, to identify where did we disagree and whether that disagreement makes me on the sunnah and makes you off the sunnah or makes you on the sunnah and make, makes me out of the sunnah or off the sunnah. Okay, is that clear? So this is what we are talking about here. This is what we need to learn. And this is very important for all of us, especially Tullab al-Ilm, to understand. And this is what you need to spread between people, okay? And propagate in your da'wah. Okay. Let us move on. So this is what we yani, expect. And again, as we said, the... Uh, in order to understand anything, in particular in order to understand Islam, you need to have what? The correct information. And you need to have the correct understanding for this information. And then the third point, you have to have the correct what? Implementation. Agree? If you try to find any other step, you won't find any step of those steps. طيب, and please, brothers and sisters, please always put these three steps. There might be another fourth step, okay, which we will mention. Either the three steps or the fourth steps in mind. Please, please. Okay? When you approach anything, just to be yani, a very systematic person, a very deep person, Okay, and as well as a very organized person. Okay. Now, brothers and sisters, so in this course or in any other study that leads you to better understanding of Al-Islam, you should expect to study something that is connected to these three steps or that lies under one of those three steps. Okay? The first part of this course is to study the correct information or the correct sources of information. Does that make sense? Sure? So let us move to the first part. So the first part of this source, of this course, is a deep study of the sources of information, the sources of proofs. Okay. From an Islamic point of view, our brothers and sisters, what are the sources of Islamic information? A, Quran, Sunnah, Sunnah Hadith, uh -huh. consensus, okay. The Sunnah of the Sahaba, uh -huh. Tabi'in, okay, yeah. Tayyip, okay. Before we get into that, a question. Generally speaking, brothers, generally speaking, what are the sources of information? Huh? Sources of information, generally speaking. Can someone... Mm -hmm. What is it? Written instructions, okay, uh-huh. Uh, 
Okay, excellent. Things that you came up with your own logic, okay, or your own experience. Do you agree with that or not? Uh-huh. Jamal, what do you think about it? It does make sense. Faisa, does it make sense? Okay. What else? Someone else is telling you. Do you agree with that or not? Uh-huh. Yeah. What else? A book to be read. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So, uh-huh. Fitra, excellent. By fitra, is, I, I find it yani, indecent to uncover my aura. What, who said so? Who, where, where did you write? Oh, no need someone to tell me about it. It's just my fitra. Okay, it's my fitra. Okay, excellent. So, we are talking about what, generally speaking, now, this, okay, can be classified. What you have said is, or can be classified into two main categories. Okay, two main categories. What are those two main categories? This will help you to understand what kind of categories we are looking for. Mm -hmm. What? What can you understand from this? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, can you just put the camera on it? Oh, on this. Okay. It's all right. Uh -huh. What can you understand from this? Okay. Good. Do you agree on this or not? Uh-huh. The rest of the brothers, do you agree on this or not? There are some external sources, okay? And this is the body or this is the system. And there are some sources coming from within. We will come to that. But do you agree first of all on this? Does it make sense? Okay. Give me an example of external sources, uh -huh. in general. Media, teacher, books, society, websites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, all of these. You are walking in the street or driving in the street, and you want to know where is the next okay, petrol station. You will find a sign. This is an external source of information. Or you pass by a brother. Ah, oh, bruv, salam alaikum. Huh? Where is the next petrol station? Okay, then he's telling second, right, left, etc. External source of information. Or by experience from before, you know that. Uh -huh. So these are external sources of information. What are the internal sources of information? Experience, mm -hmm. desire. Uh -huh. desire, desire, desire. By, okay, desire, uh -huh. what else, what, uh -huh. yes, to see yourself, your senses, okay, excellent, uh -huh. what you said, fitra, okay, fitra, uh -huh. what you said, your own logic, Hikmah, these are what? Internal sources. Do you agree on this or not? Huh? No one can disagree with that because this is something yani, well known, well established, it's just uh, simple, it's just a matter of categorizing what we see. Okay, there is here, okay, these are, t I'm going through some of these in a very quick way. Otherwise, if we are running it properly and we have enough time, then we should go yani, in a slower uh, way. Okay, so we will just yani, go through them quickly. Here, 
What is the difference between this slide and the other slide? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. What 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 is the main difference? What what do you expect here? This one and this one. Aha. Uh -huh. What is the the main difference? Is that? Yes. Big barrier, this one. Sah? You agree on this or not? Have you heard this? Speak up, brother. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. what, what, what do you think of this? Uh huh. The circle is a shield. Uh huh. Sources. Uh huh. So. No, not necessarily. What? What? Yes. Uh huh. Mm, yeah, yeah, okay. The point here is, yes? The first slide uh, is more open to the observation of the external source, the other side is more subjective. No, I, I mean, what we meant here is that before, yani the external sources, when they come, they face a barrier. Sah? They face a barrier. While the internal sources, because they are coming from within, they don't face a barrier. Agree or not? If someone is telling you an information, are you going to accept it immediately? Huh? You filter it. You think about it. You see whether it, is, it does make sense or not. Even for just a few milliseconds. Again, where is the petrol station? Okay, second right. First left. No, uh, no. Okay, you think, or yes, uh huh. You think a little while about it. Is that true or not? While, if you yourself, if you yourself witnessed something, witnessed the uh, petrol station before in this location, and then now you are driving, and you said. Yeah, I remember that it is there. You observed it yourself. So immediately, no need for you to believe in it. You are believing in it already. Is that true or not? It was confirmed. So it is taken for granted. So always external information are faced by barrier from your side because you need to verify it, think about it anticipating okay until you just came come to a conclusion that what has been said is absolutely right and it does make sense agree or not okay and other, another point here just a quick point that the external sources of information some of them are big some of them small okay some of them come are coming from this direction and the other direction same thing about internal sources, some of them are very strong, some of them are a bit weaker, and so on and so forth. Okay, quickly. So, here there is a point, okay? Unlike what many people are yani, used to, which is, in the Quran, in the Quran, whenever the Quran is commanding us to do something or commanding us as believers or commanding people in general to do something what is 
the Quranic methodology in terms of what we have said? Huh? In line with the fitrah. Uh huh. Yes. Huh? Okay. Excellent. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. Mm, yeah, not really. Uh huh. In terms of what we said. Yeah. Okay. okay, but in terms of what we said. In terms of what we said, as you say, that the Quran was the Quran is commanding us to do something. The Quran is always giving us the evidence behind that. Oh, but the Quran itself is an evidence. Agree, but the point is, if someone says, if a human being says, why do I need to adhere to this? Okay, why do I need to follow this? The Quran is telling him the justification for that, the proof for that. Why you need to follow this? The Quran is giving him that. Isa, what is happening? Okay, can you give us an example? Uh huh. Examples. No examples? There are thousands of commandments in the Quran. Uh huh. Just one by one. Uh huh. Who? Salah. Who said Salah? You said Salah? Uh huh. Okay. No, give us what is the command and how the Quran approach it. Uh huh. Yes. What did you say, brother? Okay. Excellent. So this is an example. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. أيها الذين آمنوا قو أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا. طيب. This is a commandment. If someone says, why do I need to follow that command? Huh? You will end in the hellfire. But who says that there is a hellfire? Huh? Like you meet a disbeliever, okay? You tell him, brother, or whatever, brother in Islam, okay? We'll find yani, an exit. Yani. Always there is an exit. You pray five times. He said, oh, come on. You will go to hellfire. He said, who said so? You will go to hellfire. Uh huh. <laughs> okay, excellent. Uh huh. This is another thing. Just before jumping to that, let us go back to this example. So, what is the justification? How did the Quran treat this issue? How the Quran, how do the Quran? address any commandment in order to convince us to follow it. No, just before that, yes, brother? Okay, good. But just before that, still in that example, that is very good, excellent. But before that, the Quran says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. So you already believe. So that is the basis. So you come to a Muslim who believe in Allah. And the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you have to pray five times. Why? Because you believe, khalas. This is the commandment from Allah jalla wa ala. Agree? Because you already believe. This is the ground. This is the evidence. Okay, but someone might say, what about if he doesn't believe? Oh, let us take another example, and then we'll come to this. The first command in the Quran, what is the first command in the Quran? Anyone knows? Okay. Take, uh, I meant the command in the Quran in yani, its order. But the first command to be revealed. This is the second example. Iqra. This is a command. Sah? 
اقرا but why do i need to read uh -huh. so what is the evidence to fulfill imagine muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he yani received this revelation he didn't know uh, anything about it this jibril came to him this white created beings creature came to him اقرأ. why who are you who are you so i can read uh -huh. then in the name of your lord who created you uh -huh. does that make sense here does that trig trigger something because you believe that you are a created being and this is in your fitrah and your Lord who created you is commanding you to read. That makes perfect sense. صح? This is my Lord who created me. I am a created being as because he is the creator so he knows what I don't know. He is my Lord. Yes, that does make perfect sense. And because of this, I should adhere to his commandments. اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق. That is absolutely يعني, common sense. In the other command in the Quran, the first command in the Quran according to the order of the Mus'haf, what is it? Huh? No. The first command in the Quran, what is the first command? Surah Al-Fatiha, there is no command in the Quran, صح? No, before that, in Surah Al-Baqarah, no, this is not a command. Aha. Ya ayyuhan nasu, a'budu rabbakum, alladhi khalaqakum, walladhina min qablikum. Subhanallah, it is the same logic. Agree? Ya ayyuhan nas. He's not addressing believers now because there are no believers. Tayyib. Ya ayyuhan nas. U'budu rabbakum. Why to worship the Lord? Because he is your Lord. How come? How can you prove that he is our Lord? What? Alladhi khalaqakum. And those who were before you. Walladhina min qablikum. Yes, that does make sense. He created us. He is our Lord, so we need to worship Him. And any commandment that comes from Him needs to be adhered to. We need to adhere to it. Agree? See, very yani, simple, logical uh, deduction. Okay? And once we say that we need to follow the methodology of the Quran in calling people to Tawheed, we need to understand these methodologies in order to be very effective in our da'wah. Do you follow me, uh, brothers? Okay, does that make sense? And other than these commandments, when the Quran is addressing believers, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ This is also absolute sense. Because you believe. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَوْفُوا بِالْعُقُودِ It makes absolute sense. Because you already believe, then you need to follow that. Okay? So this goes in line of what we have said. That before any instructions to be given, we need to give the grounds for these instructions to be followed. And these instructions have to have some basis from within, because these are external instructions. Agree or not? The direction to the petrol station is Straight, second left, first right. How do I follow that? I have to have internal belief 
that this person is telling the truth. صح? <coughs> Agree or not? Huh? Excellent. Excellent. This is the conclusion. Excellent point. Can you repeat that? Louder, louder. Be, be charismatic. Okay. Aggressive. I don't know about aggressive, but. Yeah. No external forces will be accepted unless it's confirmed by the internal forces as well. Yeah. You don't accept. If you uh, pass by. A crazy person, you will not ask him. Or if you ask a person and then you smell the uh, uh, alcohol, you say, come on, he's uh, drunk. Okay, I cannot accept what he's saying, what he's telling me. Huh? Huh? Yeah, maybe we'll come to that. But the point here, before getting into that, you have to have some internal filtering process to accept or to reject. Not any external source, not any external information coming to you, you will just accept it immediately. You have to have sort of filtration. Okay? Bye. Let us move on. So... Uh, yeah, so these are just some slides what, of what we have covered. The first revealed chapter, the first command in the Quran. Yeah,